Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and today we are going to talk about um, exporting your Unity project, and more specifically, we are going to export to WebGL, which means that you'll be able to run your Unity project in a web browser. Okay, so this is nothing new. Uh, Unity's been doing this for a while now, uh, but uh, the way that they're doing it now is different than before. Uh, before it wasn't WebGL, it was Unity's own sort of uh, player that they uh, had built that would run in HTML. So now uh, with WebGL, uh, we can, which is uh, HTML5 compatible, um, we can basically play our entire project in a website. So that's pretty cool, right? So and that, that's good for some applications, not not for everything, but you know there are some. Uh, projects that you can build that would be web-enabled games. Um, maybe maybe not so good for like cell phones and stuff, but definitely for uh, browser stuff and, and, and on the desktop. So the first thing that you'll want to do uh, to make sure that uh, you can actually export for WebGL is to make sure that your install of Unity actually has that module included. So what I've got here, um, I've opened up the Unity Hub and if you go down to installs, you'll see all of the uh, various installs that you've got, uh, you know, for versions as far as Unity is concerned. So we've got the latest install here at the time that I've made this video, and we have, if you hover over these, it'll tell you which one every every one of these is. You'll see that I've got WebGL build support here enabled. And um, if you do not see this, right, what you'll want to do is click these three dots here. And then you want to click on Add Modules, and come down here to where it says WebGL, and place a check mark in that box. And the same thing with adding any others. If you want to add like Linux build support, for instance, if you want to add the documentation or language packs, all of that stuff is found in here. So you can put a check mark and then click Done, and it'll start downloading uh, what it needs to download and then install. So once you've got everything installed. You can go ahead and open your uh, your scene, which I'm doing now. Um, going here, we're in part 11 of uh, Conway's Game of Life. So, as far as um, being able to run your game or build your game for WebGL, we're going to do that first. We're going to actually build our game uh, as a WebGL. Okay. And then I'm going to show you what's not going to work with WebGL. So first of all, uh, to build for WebGL, what you'll have to do is come up here to File and go to Build Settings, which will bring up this build menu here. And right now you can see the Unity icon here is set at PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. But we'll want to come down here to WebGL and then you'll want to do this, switch platform. So it's going to do a couple of things uh, in order for it to actually switch the platform that you're currently building against. And the cool thing about that is, is that you'll also get to see how this functions in the editor. And that's why what it's doing now is it's importing all the assets that are required so that it can run your build in the editor as if you were building it for WebGL. So we can go and straight up just go build and run right now, or we can click on player settings, which uh, for WebGL, there isn't really a whole lot to configure. If we look at the, some of the settings that are here, um, we've got, uh, we can set the company, we can set the product name, the version of it, we can give it an icon, um, the cursor hotspot, and uh, this, these are all WebGL specific settings. Uh, so we've got not applicable, the resolution that we can set. Um, so the canvas width and height that we want to go with. In our case, uh, we would want to go with 1024 oops, by 768. That is our uh, game resolution that we're building. Um, we have our WebGL template. We can go with the default or we can go with the manual just go with manual for now. We can create a splash image. 
um, that we don't have to worry about. Uh, other settings, this is all stuff that you don't really have to worry about at this time. If you want to customize any of this, be my guest. But it all works with the default. So the only thing that we changed here is the actual resolution. So now we could just click build and run. Or just build if you don't want to run it after the build. But build and run, basically we'll build it and then we'll run it after the build is finished. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And then it's asking us, well, where do you want to build and run this? Well, um, for our purposes, let's go ahead and just build it in uh, the Conway's Game of Life folder, right? So what we'll do in here, let's go ahead and create a folder in there in our Conway's Game of Life part 11. We're going to create a folder and we're going to call it, let's just call it HTML, all right? So in the HTML folder, that's where we're going to build Conway's Game of Life. So we're going to call it Conway, just that, and we'll save. So actually what will happen is um, it'll create a folder inside of HTML called Conway, and inside of that folder is where all of our um, builds are going to happen. So maybe what we should have done is, let's actually let's do that. Let's delete this folder. Can we? Or you know what? Let's just name it HTML. There we go. And this this will play into uh, what I'm gonna show you guys later. But for right now, let's just let's call it that. And let's click save. And we're going to replace because we already created that folder. Okay. So now it's building it, and this is actually gonna take a while. So I'm going to uh, probably fast forward through all of this. Okay. So. Here we are. Our uh, build finally completed. That only took, what, five to 10 minutes? I have no idea. I'll have to recount that in the uh, when I edit the video, but it took a while. <laughs> Just sitting here watching it was like watching grass grow. Not quite, but very, very close. So uh, what we have here is we've got basically, um, we're running localhost, and this is running on port 62049. Um, and the, the way this works is it's a different port every time and basically um, Unity sets up sort of like a, a little web server that this runs on at, on this port when uh, we build it. So it's like running on a web server but not. It's running on your local machine. So that's basically what you're getting when you go to localhost um, is everything that's on your local machine. So from here we can press B and our simulation builds just like it does in the editor. We can press P and it'll pause. B, it'll build. P, it'll pause. Um, well, when we press L, we'll load, but nothing, nothing's there. Um, also, we can save, but if we save with a file name of test and then load, it'll look like it's there, right? Because we added that option, we reloaded the option, but if we refresh the page, and we press load again, there's nothing. So it's actually not saving anything. And that's because when we try to load or save, what we're doing currently with our, our desktop build of, of our app is we are using Unity's built-in, our Unity's, it's not really Unity's, it's C-sharp's built-in IO functionality so that we can interact with the local disk uh, file system. Well, when this runs in the browser, it's basically running client side. So that means that the application runs on the client and we don't have permissions to access the client's file system. Because if we did, can you imagine, we could have code in our Unity game that basically is binary. And if the user presses a button, it builds this executable file will then install onto the um, user's hard drive and then cause all kinds of problems. Viruses would be just like crazy, all the time happening. So um, we don't get access to the user's file system and that's a security thing, right? So in order for us to save our files and to load our files, we have to kind of think outside the box. And outside the box is basically where we're gonna go when we do any saving or loading because 
to save our load files, we're going to literally utilize our web server that is going to host our WebGL uh, build of our Unity project. So what I mean by that, right now we're running localhost. If you had a web server where you hosted your website, for instance, or you ran your WordPress plug on, whatever, um, you would literally copy all of these files that were generated. And by the way, let me show you these. Um, this is our folder for part 11. And what happened here is we created an HTML folder and we've got our index.html file. And that's actually the file that's being called here by localhost. And then we've got this build folder with some files. And um, then we've got this template data. Okay. So that's really all of this stuff here, the template data, this is really all just what's part of how this web player looks, okay? Um, and this index.html further defines that. So we can actually look into this if we open it up in like Sublime and we look at the code for the HTML file. You can see, for instance, we've got Unity WebGL Player, Conway's Game of Life Part 1, okay? That's all part of the title of this, right? This is where this is, Conway's Game of Life Part 1, Unity WebGL. So we can actually edit that in the index.html file, and that's also part of the player settings in the build settings file, or in the build settings part of Unity. So we can manage it there as well. So how do we then go about fixing our whole save file and load file problem? Well, if we take all those files that I just showed you and we place those on a web server, because they're on that web server and we own that web server, we are allowed to modify files that are on that web server. So what we can do is we'll be able to create some server-side code and we're gonna use PHP for that. And what we're gonna do is we are going to create a PHP file for saving for loading and I think that's it two PHP files I, mean, I could have sworn there was one more but for now yeah we'll need to make one for saving and for loading and basically what unity is going to do our, our project we're going to utilize uh, some networking uh, functionality that unity offers to send XML HTTP requests to our PHP files and I don't know how familiar you guys are with uh, any, uh, you know, um, like JavaScript, uh, XML, HTTP stuff, sending uh, async requests over uh, the internet to uh, basically um, randomly load PHP documents. So, for instance, if you were um, creating like a, a chat application that ran in JavaScript and you needed to get the next message that someone wrote that was saved in a database, you would then call PHP to get that data back for you, but you can do that asynchronously via an XML HTTP request so that when you request that data from a PHP file, it then goes and loads up from a database, and the result is then basically captured in your XML HTTP request uh, response that you then output back onto the screen. So if that all sounds like a bunch of confusing just tech talk, that's great. You don't need to know any of the backend stuff or why it works the way it does. Um, all you need to know is, is that we're going to use Unity to communicate with another file that lives on a server that is going to give us the data that we want and then also is going to be responsible for saving the data that we need to save and load the data that we need to load. So the other cool thing that we're going to learn is um, how we're going to take uh, Unity and um, build uh, our, uh, or basically structure our program in such a way that it doesn't matter if we build it for WebGL or for the desktop, it'll basically only use those components that it needs for either build, okay? So we're gonna use, uh, work on some preprocessor uh, directives or defines in order to help us figure out what version or what platform we're trying to build for and then execute code specifically just for that. So I think my whole explanation of this whole WebGL thing is already yep, running way, way too long. So we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. I mean, this wasn't much of a tutorial, but it is an introduction to what's going to happen next. So 
I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and we are going to... Man. I mean, there's going to be a part a part 12, and not much has changed in the script, but that's fine. We just changed our build platform, and we added the HTML folder. So, all right. So I showed you guys how to create a, a web build of... Um, your Unity project. So we'll continue on from here in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments go down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a great deal. And also don't forget to check out my Patreon. Patrons, I can't say it enough. Uh, you guys are awesome. I appreciate all of the support and I'm uh, looking forward to working with each and every one of you on this project. If you have any questions, please feel free and I'll see you guys in the next one.